Welcome to another episode of Behind the Raw and this week it's the turn of the foam party. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome to another episode of Behind the Raw. So now on episode 5, it's the turn of Foam Party. And this was an image that I took when I went to a beach that I've been to a number of times before, which was Rocky Bay. Now I went there actually before I went and shot the last episode actually on Nohoval. And when I arrived there, I wanted to check what the conditions were like. I was there a completely wrong time early in the afternoon. But what I did see was a huge amount of sea foam that was flooding the entire area of the beach possibly because of a storm that had just passed. So I said, okay, this is something interesting. I'm gonna come back here for sunset. And I ended up with some very unusual shots because the sea foam decided to be part of the image itself and become more or less the star of the show, supported by obviously the water, the rocks and everything else that makes Rocky Bay so stunning. So I'm gonna bring you as always onto my computer here. I'm gonna talk you through my thought process, what I like about my image, and I'm gonna go through my edit. So hopefully you can learn thing or two that you can apply to your own photography also. So yeah, let's jump on to the computer now. Okay, so I'm over here now on the computer and I actually want to show you a couple of things, which is what I really want, one of the main reasons why I love seascape photography. So here's the image that I've chosen that we're going to edit, but I want to show you something interesting here. On the left hand side, I have just a sample few images from this shoot. And if I start here and give you a look at the first, first image, and we'll see a sequence of just one wave. So this is exactly the same composition, okay? And you see that this wave now is starting to come in up here. But watch now as I roll through this, you see this wave coming through. And then all of a sudden it reaches the rocks that are in front of me, and then it starts to explode into action. Now it's exactly the same composition, you know, you're getting a different flow of water from every single frame. And looking at each of these shots, I could edit a number of each of these because I think each of them has their own merits. Like I, for example, I love on this one, you've got the cascading water here, you've got this coming in and it's kind of wrapping around this rock. The texture in this rock is incredible. You've got the bit of sea foam, which was again the star of the show for this episode. And then up here, you've got this other wave that's coming through and starting to roll and break against these rocks. And as I roll on on this, you see now it starts to fill this channel. So here, it's completely leading the eye from the left-hand side all the way up and then up here if you look now that's about to explode up here on the next wave meanwhile we still have all of this detail that's coming through here and then sequence again coming through more water action more wave action here and I love this one actually because it looks like it's bubbling up if I go back one and then look at it the next one it's like as if it's bubbling up in relation to this area here the next one after that still continuing to bubble some great texture and movement in relation to that and each of these shots were taken at an unusual time for me but these were taken at one tenth of a second and I think they were actually taken while I was talking to camera which is quite interesting so it's not often that that happens but I was doing a piece to camera and I saw the wave coming through so I just held behind and held my finger on the shutter button and that just kept taking the shots as the water were coming in still coming in still coming in here now it's starting to retreat back out and you can see look at all the bubbles and everything that are created around here still have movement in relation to that that big wave out here look at it breaking beforehand now it breaks out here and it's now cascading back down and again you know all this just from one composition but the image actually that I'm going to um, edit is this image here so I think it was probably let me see one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh image in the sequence of those uh, images I take for that one single wave. But I'm gonna talk through in relation to what I like about this image, the approach that I'm taking from the editing point of view as well, and a couple of things as well, just to be mindful of and to watch out for. But yeah, that's an example of how many shots you can take when you're doing seascape photography, because every shot is going to be different and every wave will cascade differently as well also. So starting out in relation to um, this image here, I'll follow my usual process of what I'd normally, let, normally try and do so the first thing I want to do here is I want to make sure my horizon is straight now looking at this here it's slightly off so I can go in here click on this and I can just grab and straighten using this tool so I'm looking here at the 
um, horizon line if you follow up here and then you look at the um, crop lines you can see that you can line it up in relation to that so I think yeah okay that's possibly straight let's do a quick check let's see if auto works now I, I mentioned on a couple of episodes previously of this auto doesn't necessarily always work so I've done auto here and if you look at that it popped it up on the right hand side now what that is it's actually bringing it back more or less to where I would have had it if we look at the bottom of the frame here so looking at that here I don't think that's straight it's not straight because if you look at over here is closer to the, the intersecting line than it is over here so again if you look at that right hand side the wave is touching the intersecting line and it's not on the other side so I'm going to just straighten that up here now that is perfectly fine so now I think that's the first step that I want to do the next step and again is always a good thing to do is just to hit on auto see it what it's going to give you an idea of how the image is going to turn out so from that point of view yeah it's okay I don't like it um, because I think it's too harsh too contrasty so I'm going to undo that and I'm going to apply my own uh, edits so first thing I want to do is check my white balance so at the moment it's 6500 I think this could be a bit warmer so I'm going to bring this up here and I'm thinking looking at this I want to kind of get it up maybe around what 8000 so if I look at that here yeah I think that's a bit better I'm starting to see the color change in the sky now if I look at my histogram again here it's telling me this is dark and I purposely did that because I exposed for the highlights so there's nothing blown in the sky here but a good rule of thumb when you're starting your edit is to catch your exposure and bring it all the way down and see is there any bright areas within the image and that for me is the brightest part of the image up here which is the sky so that's what I need to be conscious of when I'm editing because that's the area that could be potentially too bright within the image so um, clicking my exposure bringing it back to here now again so now I want to do is look and say okay what can I do with my highlights so if I whack my highlights over to the right hand side there is the example as I said the sky being overblown so I don't want to whack my highlights up too high anyway it'll also give you a visual representation up here on the histogram so I want to just increase my highlights slightly now shadows is something that I definitely will need to increase here but I'm not going to go spinal tap and go all the way to the far right hand side on this and I'll give you an example as to why so if I take my shadows and bring my shadows all the way up yes I get all this lovely detail that's within the these rocks and now it's all visible but the problem that I have with this image is that it looks far too HDR and I don't want to have that so I think I'm going to increase my shadows but I'm not going to increase them that much I can play around with that when I'm looking at the blacks separately whites very very important but if I look at this image here now as it stands I am quite bright in relation to this image so what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach this image and two different ways I'm going to edit the main part and then I'm going to tackle the sky differently so that'll give me a bit more flexibility because I can increase all of the exposure in the main part of the image and then that's going to blow the sky but I can tame that back down again then by using my linear gradient so for here white's very important I want to make sure that I can bring those up as much as possible and I'm looking here that's going white which a red which is telling me it's overexposed but I'm more interested now for this which is in this part of the uh, frame so I'm going to increase my whites here slightly that much I think my blacks if I bring them down it crunches all of those and you don't get that uh, detail within the image let's just say so I'm going to bring my blacks slightly up now again no similar to what I would have done in relation to the shadows only a small amount is needed here and then I'm going to apply some dehaze and not a lot of dehaze is needed here because there wasn't much haze in the sky but by applying a small bit of dehaze here in relation to that you can start to see that it starts to bring the image now more together vibrance for me is something that I like and I want to make sure I'm increasing that so I think I'm going to give that maybe around about maybe a 16 not maybe 24 actually I think will work here and now again look looking at this image the sky looks completely a mess and it is a mess right now we're going to deal with that because I'm dealing with the foreground first and foremost and I'm just going to give it uh, just maybe a touch of saturation so that's the first step that I want to look at here the next step I want to do is I want to tackle this sky so if I turn off this highlight it'll tell me here in relation to what I need to be looking at at the sky but I want to always use my trick which is to go into my dehaze and whack my dehaze all the way up now if you notice here I can see a couple of artifacts in the sky and those artifacts in the sky are birds so you can see these streaks that are going across here the birds are flying across there so I want to get rid of those so I'm just going to take my healing tool I'm just going to go in the center of those look and see is it going to take it yes it has I'm going to take out that bird I may leave him but he is slightly moving so he's not exactly sharp and then I'm going to take 
at this out here. Now looking at that as well here, maybe I look like I have a big water spot on the sky. So I'm going to um, just take a larger brush here. I'm going to click on this, see if I can get rid of it. Okay, it's taking a bit of the cloud that's there. That should work. We'll just bring back down our dehaze and see. Yeah, that works for me. Okay, so now I'm going to take my image back into fitting on the screen. And the next thing I want to do is say, okay, do I want to crop my image? So if I want to crop my image, for example, I can go in here and look at a 16.9. A 16.9 for me does work well, but at the same point, I want it to have more of this visible or I want to have some of the sky that's visible. There's some nice clouds that are here, which will come out once I start adding some color in relation to it. But for me, I don't think I'm going to um, change that. I'm going to leave that as shot. Now, when I did my video on it, I actually did a 16.9 because I wanted it to fit better into the video. But from an image point of view, just to get the most detail, you don't necessarily need to do that. And I just spotted something else now right here, which is uh, another bird. So I'm going to pick my brush in very quickly and take out that there. So from a, an edit point of view, it's okay, but I need to now take a couple of extra steps to be able to bring out the most in relation to it. And that's where I'm going to play with my contrast. So if I look at the histogram here, it's very much so spread out. So it's a, a tale of two halves. You've got your darks and you've got your whites and you've got not much in between. To, to fix that, you can take your contrast and you can bring it over to your left hand side, which brings more of the detail into the center. So it gives you a more balanced image. Now to give you an idea visually, if I whack my contrast over to the right hand side, you see it really crunches it, but it makes it too textured. Uh, from here, bringing it down, you get a bit more detail uh, on, uh, available in the rocks, but you also keep the detail here within the waves. And then the next thing, I suppose more or less the, the second to last thing I want to do on this, is apply a linear gradient. So by applying linear gradient here to the sky, I can bring this down. I want it to be relatively soft. So the longer you bring this down, the more it changes from hard, hard to soft. So I'm going to bring this down here, and I'm going to drag that down as far as here. So I don't want it to be exactly on the horizon because I want it to kind of feather off in relation to it. And now all I'm going to do on that is I'm going to look at my highlights because that were the areas that I said, okay, I wanted to be conscious of that were the brightest part within the image. And by bringing down my highlights now, you can see that this image now starts to become more balanced. You're starting to see these clouds. You're starting to see these colors as well that are there. And looking at that, I say, okay, maybe I'll just give this a slight touch of saturation just to increase that sky because there was color within there, but you know, it wasn't a lot, but there was still enough and I want to be able to bring that out in relation to the image. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to do something with the base here. I love this wave. I love the details in relation to the rock. I love the set subtleness that you have of the foam that's coming through here. And even if I give you a look at something, which, you know, exploring the image, look at this area over here and look at the way the water is cascading like that. It's like, uh, like, like a glue going over the top of that rock. Now, I don't have any waves that are breaking out here on these big rocks on this frame. I could, of course, take another frame and blend that together. But even as it stands right now, I do like that I've got this curling wave that's here. And obviously, you can see the ship is on the horizon too. But they're the kind of supporting actors for me in relation to this. The main star of the show is this water here and has it cascades over the rock. And then as it explodes out here, I love the way you get those little bits of details in relation to that and then you've got all the sea foam leading its way up the rock and then you've got all the texture as well within the rock so what i want to do is do something with the bottom down here so again i'm going to take my linear gradient i'm going to add a new linear gradient and i'm going to instead of starting at the top i'm going to start at the bottom holding down shift to keep it straight and it's going to bring this up here and i'm going to drag that up oops sorry i'm going to drag that up to around about here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly make it brighter. So I want to just be, balance that out because it's quite dark in relation to the foreground below me. And then I'm also going to do is add a bit more warmth in relation to it because there are sand in relation to here and there's a bit of sand around there too. So I want that to be a bit warmer. So I'm going to add a bit more uh, to this probably, yeah, I bring the temperature up by 30. So now you can see the color starting to come out here. And I think this image then is far more balanced. If I come back out of here, and we press L, uh, that's going to be your light box. So it takes away all the clutter in relation to it. And you can see how this image is actually looking. And I really like it. I like the, the, the flow. I like the action. I like the motion in relation to the water. If I press L again, it goes completely black and press L again, it comes back into your main area. Something I want to look at here just to see, uh, I didn't do this on my original edit, but now, and I think this is the advantage actually when you're editing your images, you know, it's not just always one and done. If you come back to an image another time, you might find something different and you 
you can experiment and play around and you might end up with a completely different image. So I'm going to try something here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to add another mask and I'm going to go to a radial gradient and I want to look at this area here which is on the water. So if I take this and make it bigger I'm going to stretch it out to this area here bring that down here and then I'm going to just focus on this one particular area in itself. Now if I look at that and just to give you an idea with this you know if I hit my exposure it's only affecting what's in the front here but already looking at that it's making that wave become more prevalent in relation to the scene. So what I could do is I could make the entire area here brighter or I can just focus on this which is the beauty of the masks. So I can take this here and I'm going to give this another bit of a twist and I'm going to bring that out of the frame completely so that it covers all of this area here and I just purely want to have more of a focus on this wave here. Going to make that slightly bigger as well so that's going to extend it up here and now what we have is more attention on the star of the show for me which was this here it makes it a lot brighter and if I um, were to turn that on and off you can see that's it before kind of dark and murky but now straight away here it is becoming more alive and then you can also look and say okay what do I want to do on this I want to add a bit of texture so I can add texture directly within that mask and it's only affecting what's within that mask and now you can start to see all the detail coming through here of this wave and then finally before I look finish my image on that I want to look at my histogram and it's telling me okay there's blacks that are too black here which are these areas that's fine they're black I don't mind that I don't need to worry about them I could bring them up look just for pig iron it may not necessarily be different but what that's going to do is affect the entire image but for me here I think yeah look yeah it's fine I'll leave it in relation to that and then as always I'll do my final checks in relation to having a look and zooming in and saying okay is there anything in relation to the image that I need to remove and is there any noise in relation to the image as well I mean the image is very very sharp I'm happy in relation to that I think I had it on um, manual focus and on that overall image I really like it now again now that I'm looking at this here maybe just maybe I look and say okay am I going to change my crop so I go to 16.9 and now I remove that bottom rock the brightness that I brought in now I've kind of taken away but it's taking more of a focus directly in relation to that wave and what it also does is potentially gives the viewer a feeling of okay I'm going to get wet here I didn't thankfully because as you know there's another rock below that but I might leave it in relation to, to that image as well, so overall. But I really love the, the texture and the detail in relation to the wave. Finally, going into detail, like I say for noise, click on denoise. And that's going to have a look. I don't see any noise anyway in relation to the image, but once this goes in and looks at its algorithm, it might find some. So if I'm looking up here and I want to look at the darker areas, there's no real noise in relation to that. If I want to look at the texture and the, the wave, so uh, yeah there's a tiny bit of noise here if you I don't know if you can if it's going to come up on the video but there's a bit of noise in relation to this part of the wave so I'm going to enhance that and while that does its business um you know I hope you enjoyed watching another episode here of behind the raw and this fantastic shoot that I had if you haven't seen that episode I'd love for you to come join me and watch that episode of the foam party on Rocky Bay. I'll link to it up here. Uh, join me next week for a completely different um, episode. It's going to be something that I've had on my mind for a while and I wanted to share with all of you guys, you know, to things that have helped me and mistakes that I've made so that you can hopefully avoid them and fast track your own photography. So hopefully I'll see you on Sunday for that next episode. And until the next time, thanks as always for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and schlong the phone.